Welcome back everybody. In today's video we are talking about glutathione. What is glutathione? Why is it so important? How can you get more of it? What to look for if you want to supplement? And at the end of the video I am going to show you how you can easily make your own liposomal glutathione. But first off, what is glutathione? Glutathione is an antioxidant our bodies produce naturally. It is also referred to as the master antioxidant or the mother of all antioxidants. Some people say that glutathione is the most important molecule we need to stay healthy. Glutathione is said to be the secret in preventing cellular breakdown, heart disease, aging, dementia, and neurological issues, while also improving energy, providing quicker recovery, athletic performance and endurance, improved quality of sleep, and even smoother, younger looking skin. So in a nutshell, glutathione is a very important molecule. It helps protect us from oxidative stress and damage. It is involved in many metabolic processes. It is crucial for immune function and it is crucial in controlling inflammation. And as we know, inflammation leads to disease. An imbalance or deficiency of glutathione is actually observed in a wide range of pathological conditions. And interestingly enough, new studies suggest that a glutathione imbalance could be one of the major causes of the excessive inflammatory response linked to severe COVID-19 symptoms. I find these studies fascinating and I hope there will be further research. So as I said earlier, our body naturally produces glutathione. Unlike the antioxidant vitamin C, our body actually does not produce vitamin C and we have to get it through our diet. But luckily, our body produces glutathione and it does so using three amino acids, cysteine, glycine, and glutamate. Once glutathione is produced, it then gets recycled by our body since one of its functions is also to help in detoxification. The secret power of glutathione is the sulfur chemical groups it contains. Sulfur is a sticky, smelly molecule and it sort of works like a magnet, attracting toxins such as heavy metals and free radicals, sweeping them up and excreting them through urine and stool. So our body makes plenty of glutathione to help with detoxification However, if our toxic load is too great, it can lead to an imbalance of glutathione. Stress and a lack of sleep also lead to an imbalance of glutathione. And as many other things, as we age, our production of glutathione slows. So what can we do to keep producing plenty of this very important molecule? Well, first off, as I just mentioned, lack of sleep and stress deplete glutathione. So making sure we get plenty of sleep and practicing stress management can be very beneficial. Regular exercise, good for so many things, also keeps our levels of antioxidants in the body high, including glutathione. Certain foods are naturally rich in glutathione, such as asparagus, avocado, and spinach. On top of that, eating foods rich in sulfur, such as cruciferous vegetables, can be very beneficial, since sulfur is required for glutathione synthesis. And on top of eating foods rich in sulfur, eating foods rich in selenium, such as Brazil nuts, can also be very beneficial since selenium is a cofactor needed for our glutathione synthesis. And then lastly, as far as foods, increasing our vitamin C intake 
can also be very beneficial. Glutathione actually recycles vitamin C, but vitamin C also helps maintain the body's supply of antioxidants, including, of course, glutathione. You could also supplement with whey protein, unless, of course, you have an allergy to whey protein, like myself. But if you do not have an allergy, whey protein is rich in the amino acid cysteine. And again, cysteine is one of the three amino acids making up glutathione. You could also consider taking a supplement called N-acetylcysteine or NAC, which can help with glutathione production. And then, of course, lastly, you could just take a glutathione supplement. The problem with glutathione supplements is that they are easily broken down in our digestive tract. So basically, they won't go where we want them to go. So if you are thinking of taking a glutathione supplement, your best bets are to get glutathione injections. And I actually have some glutathione right here, which is meant to be injected in the muscle. You can also get glutathione IVs at some doctor's offices. But if you don't want to go the injectable route, I don't blame you. Your second best bet is to use liposomal glutathione. I have this right here. I'm going to show you how to make this in a second. But when we take a nutrient and encapsulate it in a liposome, and if you have been here for a while, you know I love my liposomal vitamin C. I have made several videos on it, and in one of them I show you how to make your own liposomal vitamin C. But when we take a nutrient, whether it is vitamin C or glutathione, and we encapsulate it in a liposome in a fat pocket. This nutrient now easily travels through our digestive tract, makes its way to the small intestine, where it gets absorbed by our cell membranes, and from there travels into our bloodstream. So the phospholipids in here closely resemble our cell membranes. That's why liposomal nutrients are very easily absorbed. So, your best bet if you want to take a glutathione supplement are to take a liposomal glutathione or as I said you could get injections or you could try an acetylcysteine. Now if you are not interested in making your own liposomal glutathione you can turn off here. Thank you so much for being here and if you are interested I'm going to take you into my kitchen and show you how to make this. All right we have everything we need right here and the process of making liposomal glutathione is basically the same as making liposomal vitamin C. If you have not seen my liposomal vitamin C video, I will link it down below. But we need, of course, some glutathione powder. And I'm using this right here. This is reduced glutathione, and <laughs> that does not mean it has less glutathione. Reduced glutathione is the active, stable form of glutathione. So I'm using this brand right here. Then we also need some lecithin granules. And personally, I like to use soy lecithin, but if you have an allergy to soy or you just want to avoid soy, you can also use sunflower lecithin. So this is a non-GMO soy lecithin right here. And lastly, we need some distilled water. And you want to use distilled water, not tap water, because you don't want to have any minerals in the water. And we also need a form of alcohol. I'm just using this cheap vodka right here. Some of you have asked me, can you make this without alcohol? And personally, I would say no, because the alcohol is an emulsifier and it is needed to mix the water and the fatty part. So personally, I would say the alcohol is needed, but it is at such a low percentage. It is at 4% and most of it evaporates. We also need a scale. However, if you do not have a scale, I will measure everything in tablespoons as well. And I will put all the measurements in the description box. We also need a glass beaker, a blender, and then lastly, I have an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, an ultrasonic cleaner is not completely necessary. You will get an encapsulation of the nutrient we are trying to encapsulate just by blending it. The blending action itself and the warmth 
it creates will give you somewhat of an encapsulation. However, you do get a better encapsulation if you use an ultrasonic cleaner. So I would say if this is something you can see yourself making for the long run and you also make liposomal vitamin C, it is well worth it to buy an ultrasonic cleaner. This one was around $100. I will link it in the description box. So we are going to start by measuring 25 grams of the reduced glutathione. I have my scale on grams and like I said, I'm also going to see how many tablespoons this makes. So here is one tablespoon. One tablespoon is about eight grams. So I have just a bit much in here. Here we go. So we have 25 grams of our glutathione and that was about four tablespoons. So I'm going to reset my scale to measure the water. And I always measure everything, the solids, the liquid on grams because really it's about the same. So we're going to use 72 grams of water. Perfect. So again, if you're worried about the alcohol, it is a very small amount. In fact, we're only putting 17 grams in here and most of it evaporates. Here we go. So we have this, now we're going to measure our lecithin. And for the lecithin, I'm just going to put the blender on the scale and measure it in there, making sure we're starting at zero. And just as I was grabbing the tablespoon, I realized I forgot to measure the liquids in tablespoons. I will do that afterward and I will put the measurements in the description box. So we need 33 grams of lecithin. So there's one, two, I would say that is three and a half, what, 35, that's okay. A couple grams over 34. So three and a half tablespoons of lecithin and that gets us to about 33 grams. So as you can see, the glutathione, unlike the vitamin C, actually mixes up quite well in the water. So when we make liposomal vitamin C, we always have to either put it in the ultrasonic cleaner or put it on a stove so that the vitamin C will dissolve in the water. But the glutathione, you can see, is doing a good job. So I'm just going to mix it a little bit more just to make sure it is actually dissolved in the water. And then we are going to add it to our blender. So now we're going to blend this really well for about three to five minutes, depending on your blender. All right, I blended this for about four minutes. Now I'm going to put it in the fridge, leave it in there for a couple of hours, take it out, blend it again, and I'm going to repeat this process about three or four times. Then I will put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and I will show you tomorrow how I'm going to do that because I will actually leave this in the fridge overnight. But again, I will take it out every four to five hours and blend it again. Now, if you do not have an ultrasonic cleaner, I would say repeat this process about six times and then you're done and you can bottle your liposomal glutathione. The reason we are repeating this process several times, blending it, putting it in the fridge, blending it again, is to make sure the lecithin granules are dissolved in the mixture. So I just blended my mixture one more time. Altogether, I blended it three times. I left it in the fridge overnight and now we are going to put it in our glass beaker and you can see we're not making a lot but interestingly enough this is 50 serving sizes of glutathione 500 milligrams each so you just need a tiny bit of this and now we're just going to take a bit of saran wrap place that on top and we will put this in our ultrasonic machine. Turn it on, 
put it on 30 minutes and before I turn it on because it's really loud right now the temperature is 17 degrees 18 degrees so I couldn't find an exact temperature to leave it on with vitamin C you want to make sure to not go over 36 degrees Celsius because otherwise the vitamin C will degrade I couldn't find an exact temperature for glutathione but I would say to be on the safe side so it doesn't degrade keep an eye on the temperature make sure it does not go over 36 degrees Celsius so I don't have to worry about that right now it is at 17 so we're going to turn this on for 30 minutes keep an eye on the temperature and then I will turn it on for another 30 minutes and as you can see right here I actually have the basket in the ultrasonic machine because you do not want the beaker to touch the sides or the bottom of the ultrasonic machine. Some people say the basket interferes with the encapsulation. I have not noticed that. If you're worried about it, you could take a couple of paper towels and put them on the bottom and just make sure that the beaker also doesn't touch the sides. So let's turn this on for about an hour and we're done. All right, I had this in here for an hour and it is done and my temperature never went over 25 degrees celsius so nothing to worry about i am going to just dry this off and then we are going to transfer it and you can see it got nice and thick so that was quite easy right and so much more cost efficient than buying liposomal glutathione. Now this does not look like much, but this is actually 50 serving sizes. If you take 500 milligrams of liposomal glutathione per serving size. Personally, I do not take glutathione on a daily basis. Research doesn't quite agree whether it is a good idea to take glutathione on a daily basis. Some say no problem. Others theorize that we have a feedback loop, meaning if we put something in our body, the body naturally produces, it might slow production. So just to be on the safe side, I only take glutathione about four or five days a week. Now this does not taste good. It doesn't smell good. What I personally do is I take about an eighth of a teaspoon, I put it in a glass, I also add my liposomal vitamin C, which also doesn't taste good. I add a bit of orange juice and then I just chuck it down. So that way it's not too bad. Now, another thing you could also do if you want to make liposomal glutathione and you already make liposomal vitamin C, you could just add the glutathione to the vitamin C. Of course, if you take your vitamin C daily, then you would also take your glutathione daily. So just whatever works for you. But if you want to do that, let's say you're using my recipe. Instead of taking 176 grams of vitamin C powder, let's say we're adding 20 grams of glutathione powder, just to make the math easy, you would only use 156 grams of vitamin C powder, add 20 grams of the glutathione powder, the rest stays the same. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you're going to make this and if so, if you notice any difference, any benefits. Thank you so, so much for being here. Any questions or comments, of course, please leave them down below. I always love to hear from you. And that's it. Until next time. Bye.